Hello, and in this video we're going to be looking at how to run bolt.new locally and completely free. For this, we're going to be using bolt.diy and Google Gemini, which is currently one of the best AI models out there, and it is completely free. And so, without further ado, let's begin. Alright, first thing we can do is go to the bolt.diy GitHub repo. I'll leave a link in the description down below and copy the link. Go to your desktop, create a new folder, drag and drop it into Visual Studio Code, go to your terminal, and write git clone, and paste the link of the GitHub repo. Once everything is done, cd into the newly created folder, we can run the npm install command, and here is our code. And so, let's go back to our browser, and connect open router. Once again, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And here, let's create a new account. Agree to the terms of service. And inside of there, go to API keys and create new API key. Select a name for it and a credit limit if you want. You can just set it $1. Regardless, we're not planning to use any paid models. But just in case, set the minimum limit available. Next, we can copy it. And go back to our Visual Studio Code. In there, let's simply run npm run dev and see that everything is working. By the way, this doesn't work on Safari if you're on a Mac, so just use something like Chrome or Opera. As you can see, here we have a page that looks very similar to Bolt, only up at the top, we have some options on which AI model we can use. As you can see, there's plenty, we can use DeepSeek, we can use GPT, we can use Claude, anything you want. But in this case, we're interested in open router. The reason being is it's a much better connection and offers a lot of things for free. For example, Google Gemini. Now, let's go back to our Visual Studio code and add our open router API key to the env.local. In there, we'll have an env file, but this is env.example. We'll need to create a real one. So for this, Still inside of the example, find the open router API key or the placeholder for it, paste it in there. Next, once it's secured there, copy the entire thing, go into Visual Studio Code into the left part with the file and folder structure, and create a new .env.local in the same directory as the previous env.example. In there, paste our env, and we can remove .env.example once that's done. Next, let's reload the app and see that everything works. Well, it seems there's no errors appearing. And as you can see, we can select the model over here. But now let's construct a proper prompt. First, let's go to ChatGPT. You can go to DeepSeek or Quen, doesn't really matter. Go to GPTs, search up for bolt.new prompter. Use either one of them, it doesn't really matter which one. Click start chat. And let's write this basic prompt for it. So create a prompt for bold.new, make it a portfolio website, make the website unique, creative, and responsive. Let's make it for a web developer, make the prompt detailed. So pretty basic prompt. And let's wait for GPT to finish writing everything. And now that it's done, let's copy and paste it into our open router, into bold.diy, and let's click enter. As you can see, it's beginning to write all the code. And as you can see, it's quite similar to bold.new. Looks slightly different, but the difference is negligent. And so yeah, let's wait for it to finish writing everything. So this might be fixed by the time I'm making this video, maybe not. But regardless, there is sometimes an issue with bold.ay that doesn't launch it automatically, like bold.new. The only thing you have to do is go to the bold terminal and run npm run dev like you would in any Vita app. And that fixes everything. Here we have some error. Let's ask Bolt to fix it. And once again, it's writing the code. And it's fixed. Let's see what it gave us. And here we have this. As you can see, we don't have any images in here, but it looks pretty cool. A basic portfolio website, but this is basic. Obviously, we're not going to stop here. And I'll start this prompt. Now add a cool moving gradient to the background that moves on its own and also reacts to the user's mouse movement. Let's see what it gives us from this. Once again, it's writing all the necessary code. 
And here it is, and let's check what it gave us. As you can see, we have this gradient, and it reacts to the mouse's movement just as we asked. The rest hasn't changed. So, pretty decent so far. Let's continue on. Now let's say great. Now let's make the circle in the background section. A different thing, something animated. So, let's just give it some imagination, and let's see what it gives us from the top of its head. And here it is, and here we have a 3D cube. So yeah, pretty cool. As you can see, a very easy integration, and looks decent enough. Obviously, right now we're not really trying to make a cool or good looking portfolio website. We're just messing around to see what it gives us. And now at the time lapse of me adding some extra features to it, like making the cube interactive, then fixing it to make it interactive along with the previous background, some more fixing, Next, adding a new page and adding some animations to said page. So as you can see, here it is. We have these kinds of animations. So overall, just playing around with it. You can do this too. Unlike with Bold.new, you have infinite tokens. So well, just playing around with it. See what you can do and see what you can create with this tool. Now let's see how it handles GSAP animations. So here we have the website. We'll start with this kind of prompt and improve it. Essentially, we want some text that's moving sideways as we scroll, while the page itself doesn't move. Let's see if it handles this request. It's writing the code. Here's the website. And here's this component. Not precisely what we wanted, but the concept is correct. Let's ask it to fix it. Oh, and by the way, Google Gemini might be worse than Claude 3.7 at coding overall, but it is much faster. Obviously, I'm speeding some things up over here, but still, I would say it is at least three times faster than what I saw in Bolt.new. So if you need speed, Bolt.diy is definitely the way to go. And here it is, and this is exactly what we want. As you can see, we're scrolling over here, and the animation is moving with the scroll. Pretty darn good. And now let's give this component a star background. What I mean by star background is what I have on my most popular video with a black background and a bunch of dots flying around imitating stars. Let's see if it handles this request. And let's see if it does. And yes, this is exactly what we wanted. However, it did watch the previous animation, so it gave us the star background, but it removed the long text component. But this is fine. We can work a lot more with it, fix everything. But still, it's great. With a single prompt and bit of error fixing, it gave us this great animation. Well, before, like over a year ago, when I was making that video with the star background, it took quite a while to get this right, and now... What, two minutes, five minutes, and it's all done. All right, now let's add another animation, which is a matrix grading code animation, which I also had in a previous video of mine. And so let's see if it manages to do this. And yes, it does. As you can see, we have this animation. Once again, the pasta took quite a while to get right. Now a single prompt and everything's just there, already integrated into the website. And what we can also do is add a color picker to it so that we can, in real time, change the color of the matrix rating code. And so let's wait for it to finish. And it's done. And let's see what it gave us. As you can see, on the right, we have this color picker. And, well, everything works. We change the color to anything, and the matrix rating code becomes that color, which is awesome. And so this is going to be the last test we're going to do today. Obviously, this thing has a lot more capabilities. And you can test them out and try them out yourself as it's completely free. And so yeah, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thank you.